Here is a simple problem from Putnam 1972. To show that, for all natural numbers n that is greater than 1, n does not divide 2 to the power n minus 1. Before we move on, don't forget to give a like, subscribe to my channel, and turn on post notifications. The concept that is going to help us prove this statement is called order modulo n. For integers a and n that are co-prime, the order of a mod n is the smallest positive integer d such that a to the power d is congruent to 1 mod n. Let me first explain why this number d must exist. So under mod operation mod n, the possible outcomes are only 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to n minus 1. And as we keep multiplying by a, the index goes up. So a, a squared, a cubed, infinity. There are infinitely many powers of a, and when they undergo the mod n operation, they will be mapped to either one of these n possible outcomes. And because there are only finitely many out possible outcomes and there are infinitely many powers, so using the concept of the pigeonhole principle, there is always um, something that's some powers that are going to uh, repeat for the outcome. So we can always find two powers, say a to the power x, a to the power y where x, y are positive integers, such that when we do uh, mod n, they are actually congruent. When they are both divided by n, they have the same remainder. Then by symmetry, maybe we can assume um, x is, is the larger one. Assume x is larger than y. Of course, we assume that they are different. Now, from this, we can say a to the power x minus a to the power y is congruent to 0 mod n. And then we can take common factor a to the power y, and then what remains inside the bracket will be a to the power x minus y minus 1. And that's congruent to 0 mod n. Now, because a is co prime with n, they do not share any uh, prime factor, which means that this number will not be divisible by n, nor it will, it's going to um, um, be divisible by any prime factor of n. So that means the other part, a to the power x minus y minus 1, has to do all the work. So that means a to the power x minus y minus 1 is congruent to 0 mod n since a n co prime. Now from this we can say a to the power x minus y is congruent to 1 mod n. So that means we must, all, we must always be able to find a positive integer such that a to the power of that number is congruent to 1 mod n. And when we pick the smallest of such numbers, then we call that the order of a mod n. The reason we consider this number very often is that with this order mod n, we know the powers of n will form a periodic sequence, something like a and then a squared a cubed all the way up to a to the power d minus 1 and then next one will be a to the d and that's actually equal to 1 mod n and then the sequence repeats so next one is again a a squared a cubed and so on when we do the mod n operation so that means it's periodic that means all the mod n tells us the structure of powers mod n. One property about order mod n is that whenever we have power, say a to the power m is congruent to 1 mod n,
then the order should divide this power m. This index should be a multiple of the order because this power is somewhere a period ends according to the periodic sequence that we've illustrated above under the mod n operation. And so that's a multiple of the time the first period ends, and that's d. So that means then we can say that this d divides m. Another question is what number should we choose to do the mod operation? In our main problem, of course, we can consider mod n, but we know nothing about this number because it's too general. So maybe we can consider something more specific. Say a prime number p, because we have more information on powers mod p. For example, Fermat's little theorem tells us that if p does not divide integer a, then this number a to the power p minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod p. For our main problem, more precisely, we might consider a prime factor p of n, which means we try to divide 2 to the n by a prime factor of n. So let's see how things go. So to start our proof, we first assume the contrary, which means that we assume there is really a natural number n. is larger than 1 and this n divides 2 to the power n minus 1 and then as we have planned let p be the smallest prime factor of n now since 2 to the power n minus 1 must be odd So we have n as a divisor of that number and also p to be also odd, an odd number. Now as n divides 2 to the power n minus 1 and p divides n, so we know that p also divides 2 to the power n minus 1. Or we say that 2 to the n is congruent to 1 more p. Now since p is odd, it's obviously co prime with 2. So we consider the smallest positive integer d such that 2 to the power d is congruent to 1 mod p, which means actually we're saying the order of 2 mod p. Then by what we have done previously, we know that this d should divide n because we know that 2 to the power n is congruent to 1 mod p. And at the same time, by the Fermat's little theorem, this number d divides the number p minus 1, 2. But now from this, we can tell that d must be at most p minus 1. But this implies d is at most p minus 1, which means that d, this number, this number d, must be even smaller than p, the smallest prime factor of n. So that means d is neither prime, because for else this contradicts the minimality of p, nor is composite, because it would then have a smaller prime factor, again, contradicting the minimality of p. So therefore, d must be 1, and so 2 to the power 1 is congruent to 1 mod p. 
but that's impossible because it means p divides 1. So the only thing that can happen is that our assumption is wrong. So we can say we have a contradiction. So there is no such number n larger than 1 that divides 2 to the power n minus 1. So that's the end of the proof.